Hi guys! Thank you so much to everyone that took the time to fill out the survey last weekend. It really really means a lot and I learned so much about what you want to see on this channel so that was pretty awesome. Um, I did get a few questions and I want to answer those for you today. Not only that but I do have a couple questions that I get you ever so often on Instagram and Twitter, so I'm including those in this. Um, I'm recording this with my phone, so I'm using my iPad, which I'm sure looks pretty weird since this thing is massive. Anyways, um, question number one. Do you ever make any patterns to be sold using graphics or elements from graphic bundles like Creative Market and Hungry JPEG? Or do you use your own graphics that you have made? Um, that's a really good question. So for patterns, no. I use everything that I have made myself, except for maybe some textures that I've gotten on places like Creative Market, or I mean, I sometimes make those myself too. Other client work is a different story. I have definitely used stuff from Creative Market for other clients. Um, check with your client if you're not sure if they care or not. Um, I've definitely had people send me stock photos that they want to use. You can also get those on Creative Market. Um, check different sites, like the print on demand sites, on how they feel about it. It will say in their FAQs if they care if you use things from Creative Market. Question two, I wanted to sell to Microstock. What format should I use for my designs? So it completely depends on the program you're using. If you have Affinity Designer, you have really no other option but to save it as a tile itself, not like a repeat that you've put together, but just the tile itself. Most of the time if somebody's buying it, they'll have Illustrator and they can turn it into a repeating swatch. Um, I know in the survey you said you had Illustrator, so it is slightly different. Uh, you will set up your artboard, um, have the tile fill up the artboard. Most of the time I will go ahead and create a clipping mask and then go in with the pattern tool to create the pattern and it'll save it into swatches. That is how most sites will want you to set it up because they want to have it in the swatches. Um, I take it a step further and I will use like a rectangle tool and put it off to the side and go ahead and show the repeat. They can also drag the shape into whatever document they needed to, uh, which also makes it really easy for them. And then I label each shape so that they know what it is. So I know that was like a lot of information to take in in just a minute. So what I'm going to do next month, I am having a complete new class on Skillshare all around the pattern tool and how I set up files for places like Pattern Bank or like the Microstock sites. Um, it'll give you a better idea. It should be out like April 4th or something. Uh, so it was a really, really good question. Question three, what's the best way to make money as a designer? So that's like the number one question everyone wants to know. There are a ton of ways as a designer to make money. My best tips for you are to pick one or two of the ways that are out there and stick with them for a while because it does take time to build up to the progress to be able to make enough money to live off of that. Um, you could do print on demand, you could create your own products to sell on Etsy, you can do freelance work, you could do invitations. Um, you could do vectors or another graphics for stock sites. There's a lot out there. But like I said, just stick with it for a while and don't spread yourself too thin because you will get really overwhelmed trying to do it all. So just don't do it all. <laughs> um, the second thing I would suggest if it is possible for you, I would recommend doing a nine to five job or even a part time job in the graphic design world. It could even be at like a local print shop. You'll learn a lot about how the documents need to be set up. You'll also see some really bad designs and some really good designs. So it's good to do one of these jobs. Not only that, but it's a great way to meet people. A lot of my freelance client work comes from people that I met from my past nine to five jobs. Number four, how do I come up with sketches? Um, yeah, I don't really sketch that often, if I'm honest. Uh, it's one of those things that I always say I'm going to do. 
and I don't really do it very often. However, when I do sketch, most of the time it's usually because I am not at home. I'm either traveling or it's during the holidays and I'm at my in-laws or my family's house and it's just something to do when I actually have some downtime. I will sometimes sketch though when I am out if something has sparked an idea if I'm out shopping or I'm somewhere and I just want to get an idea down really quickly so I don't forget. I do have a small little notebook that I keep in my purse that I can sketch things out. Um, I've been known to sketch things on napkins in restaurants and make notes on receipts. So uh, don't let your inspiration just leave you. Make sure that you do sketch it. Um, another one I will sometimes sketch if I'm taking classes or if there's some trend that I feel like I want to try to sketch. And the very last question, what is your thought process when designing? So that completely depends on what I'm designing for. If it's for myself, I pretty much am just going based off of whatever has inspired me at that moment and trying to figure out how I can make it my own style, which comes with time. Um, I've definitely been inspired by other artists and designers and so I'm thinking a lot about how I can use that inspiration, bring it into my own style and make sure that I'm not copying that artist because it's extremely important that you do not copy somebody's work. 100% be inspired by them, just don't steal their work. Um, my other thought process, it depends if I'm designing for, like say I'm getting ready to do a trade show, I have to really think about what is going on in the marketplace right now, like what's popular right now, what's going to be popular next year, and how I can transition that into my own style. Um, even colors, you have sometimes to have to really think about the colors because it can be so completely different from what you use a lot of. I use a ton of teal. Teal's not always popular, so I have to figure out ways to make it my own. Um, and not get just lost. But it also needs to be, any work that you're doing towards a trade show needs to be commercial enough because these people have to sell it um, on their own products. <laughs> and then if I'm doing freelance work because I do a lot of uh, like graphic design and branding, um, I also do greeting cards freelance as well. So I have to think about who the consumer is for them and making sure that it appeals to their market. So sometimes it can be something completely different from your own style. I worked for years in the home improvement industry and while I got to have fun with it, it was not necessarily my style. So you really have to consider their audience and making sure that it fits for them and then it gets the message across in a fun and new-ish way <laughs> um, and that you are not offending anybody. So those were the questions that I got and I really enjoyed answering them. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below or shoot me a message on Instagram or Twitter or even give me an email. I'd love to hear from you. So thanks again guys. Till next time. Bye!